This is Pauline Jennings, and you're listening to Musician Talk. The duo called Susie Plays Guitar is playing at the Contented Cow on March 11th, so I thought it would be a great time to have them on the show. It gives you a chance to get to know the musicians before going to the gig. Plus, they have a new album of original tunes to talk about. Susie Plays Guitar features the musical talents and passions of Kelsey Word and Trisha Schweitzer. Kelsey plays the lead guitar, Trisha plays rhythm, and both of them love to sing. In 2018, they met, became friends, jammed together, liked what they heard, formed their duo, and have been running strong ever since, with gigs including playing on the main stage at Pride Festival and at a Saints game. Let's get to know these two talented ladies better. It's time to talk with Kelsey Word and Trisha Schweitzer. Hello and welcome to Musician Talk, Trisha and Kelsey. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. I just want to start out with your musical journey and how you guys met, how you got together, how you started playing together. You are a part of a group called Susie Plays Guitar, Guitar, and it's a duo group. It's just the two of you. Yes. Now, yep. Why don't you just take me through that journey? Sure. So I was playing in a band and Trisha and her wife would come see us play. And um, I was in the band with my wife and we kind of became friends and hit it off as a couple of couples. And so we were hanging out and, and Trisha and I were like, oh, you know, we're both musicians. Let's jam a little bit together. And then that just, it kept going from there. When you started playing together, what did you like about each other's playing? I mean, why, why, why was it a fit? Well, number one, I play rhythm and I really like to sing. I, it's probably one of the strongest elements of my journey as a musician. So that works out really well. I have kind of a, a stronger lead voice, I guess. And, mm -hmm. um, I can play rhythm well, and Kelsey's got a great voice and really high and mine's low. And so they work together really well. And then yeah. Kelsey is quite the trained musician and is really good at lead guitar. So it's kind of a really good connection. But I didn't become okay or good at lead guitar until we started playing together. So that right. kind of developed from there, our style. So we would play covers together, what like whatever Trisha knew, singer songwriter stuff. Who would you cover? So I liked to do a variety of things, anything from country. I had some John Hyatt songs in my pocket. I did some Indigo Girls songs, of course. I actually have always written a lot of my own songs though. Okay. So I had a yeah. variety of those that I would pull out because I really enjoy songwriting and I enjoy doing it both on the guitar and the piano. So when you started playing together, then you, you were already a songwriter, Trish. Were you writing songs too, Kelsey? I've, I've written songs on piano and guitar since I was a kiddo. So nothing that really sticks. Mm -hmm. And then I've always tried to play with people and nothing is stuck there either, you know, with original songs. Well, it's, it's tough to play out with original songs and because people like to hear what they know. And so yeah. you have to, it's, it's harder, I think, to develop an audience. Um, people like their covers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you met, hung out as couples, then you started playing together. How did you decide to create this duo? Well, I think everybody thought it was a good idea. Um, they heard us sing together when we'd sit around and make food and drink wine. And they were like, God, you guys sound really good together. You should start something. And so we did. And it kind of actually took off right away because we formed the band. We created a website. We played the Pride Festival, uh, Twin Cities Pride Festival that following summer. Because we started in September of 2018. And then we wow. played Pride of 2019. And then we also actually went to women's week in Massachusetts and cool. played at a club there. And so we were like, wow, this is great. And then we just started playing at a variety of wine bars. We started putting ourselves out there. Um, I have a cousin that has a recording studio. So we did some recording with him and that was free. So we were able to kind of build on something. Yeah. And since then we've gotten some corporate gigs. We've played at other festivals in Minnesota and we ended up getting some bank. And so that's how we recorded our album. So wow, um, that's you know, impressive. We just took all the money that we were making. I mean, not a ton of money, but of course some money to right. help us create an album that we could pay for. And so that's where we are now. 
what you guys both mentioned playing piano. Uh, I, I do want to get a little bit into your personal journeys of when you started playing piano and guitar and how that kind of meshed throughout your life. Why don't you go first, Kelsey? Uh, my mom was a piano teacher. So I started playing in the womb. <laughs> right. uh, I used to be a lot better than I am now. And then, of course, growing up, like, oh, guitar is really cool. I want to be a guitar player. Mm -hmm. So dabbled with that, but nothing really came of it. And nothing came of it, however, you're playing guitar now. So when Until you now, that? yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a second. Do we even want to hear this? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Then it just blossomed. It's great. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's helpful because you're classically trained and you're able to, you know, teach yourself some great things through that knowledge. So my experience is totally different. I feel my way through music. So when I started out as a kid, as far as I can remember, I would watch my sisters play the piano because they all took lessons. And I just jumped on the piano by watching them and then just started kind of writing my own little songs and just was glued to it. I played it all the time. I remember my siblings saying, would you just stop playing the piano? <laughs> constantly like making noise. So I did that all throughout, you know, my childhood. And then my sister, when I was in the, I came home from college, my first year, she had a guitar and she's, and I was like, I should start playing that. So I didn't start playing guitar until I was a freshman in college. And then it just kind of took off from there. And I didn't want to put that down because I couldn't bring my piano to school. Right. Oh so God. I had the guitar to play rhythm. So my journey is all about rhythm and, and self-taught and, and self-taught. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. everything I do is just based on rhythm and then putting vocals to it and creating songs. And that whole rhythm thing that you think of a piano as a melodic instrument, but it's definitely a rhythm instrument. It's part of the rhythm section. So that kind of came probably naturally after playing the piano and working on the piano to be able to, to hit the rhythms on a guitar. Yeah. 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 And it also sounds like, uh, Trisha, that music fit right away. I mean, it, you, you could not do it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. It's always been there in some form. Well, that's a great little journey that you took me on. And I'm glad that you guys met and that you're together because you're making some great music. I really, really like your, your songs. So I'm excited to play them for the audience, starting with this first one. If you could tell us a little bit about Wayside, that's the one we're going to play first. I don't know if I honestly remember how it started. I think, um, <laughs> was it the chords or the lyrics? I think it was chords and lyrics all together. You sent something to me and then I kind of built on it. Yeah, that's how it always goes though with the songwriting process. Like Kelsey will send me these little chunks, and then I'll just be like, "Ooh, fun! I'll do something with this." Mm -hmm. um, that's cool. But yeah, the I guess the Wayside song is about just taking the next steps in your journey, you know, and wanting to live out, you know, things that you've always wanted to do. And I know that I really wanted because at that point in my life, I was in a band. Um, well, when we met, I was in a band where I was a lead singer and I wasn't playing guitar and I wanted to. Um, and so this kind of is a reflection of that opportunity of like, yes, I'm diving into this next band, which is a duo. And I have the opportunity to play because we complement each other really well. I think that's funny that was. you get bored being a lead singer. <laughs> because <laughs> that's what a lot of people were like I want to be a musician I want to be the lead singer <laughs> right exactly that's what I want to be in the front of the band with the light yeah. right here on my face right <laughs> let's yep. take a listen to Wayside written by Kelsey Word and Trisha Schweitzer from the band Susie Plays Guitar here it is <laughs> Stick around 
They're all letting me down with the poker faces. How was I to know? Times are changing like the wind. Ready to give up the show. Jennings and you're listening to Musician Talk. You just heard Wayside, an original written and performed by my guests, Trisha Schweitzer and Kelsey Word from the group Susie Plays Guitar. Okay, so this song, I love the groove. Right away, it starts with a really cool, nice rhythm guitar groove. And, mm-hmm. um, and it's kind of mysterious. You guys' voices blend really, really well. And that's probably why everybody said, yes, you guys should, you guys should play a ba- in a band or you should put something together because the, the blend is wonderful. Mm-hmm. It really is. Um, so thank you for sharing that song with us. Thank you. And we thank like you. each other. Yeah. Oh, doesn't that help? <laughs> it does. Yes. It's <laughs> nice when you, you know, if you meet a good friend that you can connect with. Absolutely. That's exactly what happened with, I mean, I'm still best friends with the woman that I sang with for 20 whatever years and the guitar player. So that it's, that's so key because you're going to run into problems, right? There always is, or or issues or stumbling blocks, you know, and when you're friends, you can seem to work that out a lot better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do when you have disagreements? Well, Trisha's a Pisces, so she's very forward. Nothing gets like left under the rug for very long. So it's, okay. it's always right. Out she likes open. to pull out that Pisces <laughs> thing on me all the time. She's, she's a Pisces. <laughs> anyway, yes, I yeah. am. And she's fire. So, okay. It comes out right in front, right away. So we don't, it usually doesn't take long to get through anything. Eh, we don't really have too many issues. <laughs> That's nice. That's perfect. And there's only two of us. There's not like four of us that have to decide on anything. And right. We are right. on the same page. So the name Susie plays guitar. It's really, really hard, as we discussed before we started recording, to come up with band names. And I, I have tried a couple of times and I have failed epically because I look back and I just shake my head. So That's such a stupid name. Hmm. How did you guys come up with yours? So I was sitting at uh, Palmer's bar on a Sunday morning, having a beer, watching a gangster movie. And they said, that's so, so Susie Cream Cheese. I think it was Al Pacino or something. And I was like, oh, Susie Cream Cheese, that's a great name. And we were trying in the process of thinking of band names. So we went with Susie Cream Cheese for a long time and started making all our media around that and so on. Then we found out that searchability is like nil because it's a Frank Zappa thing character wow. lyric wow. it was his groupie uh so oh, we had interesting. To something different and then it just kind of well <laughs> became Susie plays guitar. our simple minds well what does Susie do why are we Susie we are collectively Susie there's not one or the other that is more so and it's a play on being a housewife which you know we both have full-time jobs and stuff we're not like but we do have our martinis and our aprons and Trisha loves to bake um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how Susie, you know, how Susie plays guitar ties in with being a housewife. I can't figure that out. <laughs> we, it's kind of just a silly if you let it sit in, ploy, it will really. Sense. Um, <laughs> we're pretty much partiers. We actually like to drink a lot of wine and play music and go watch music and play more music and Ooh, drink more wine. Much. So, yeah, it's. <laughs> Wait, you know, I also, I think the style that we, you know, we like to dress up when we play and 
we've been influenced by kind of like the 1950s, 1960s. And so, you know, that goes into the housewife thing, you know, like, so we just have fun with it. Right. The housewife and the martini and the apron. Yes, Definitely. 1950s. Got it. (laughs) That's great. So um, I'm wondering about your new album uh, that you just recorded recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Two months ago, basically. And where? Minnehaha Recording Studios in South Minneapolis. Awesome. And, um, and it's completed, it's done? It's completed and done, and we're just releasing it piece by piece. And back to the housewife thing, you'll notice it's called Stirring It Up or Stirring Things Up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How well, did you pick the songs to include on your album? <clears throat> well, we've written so many over the years. Like I said, we formed in 2018 and we think we have like about 22, 23, 24, about 24 songs now. Um, Cause they just keep coming out. It's just so easy for us to write together. It's them out. very complimentary. So it works. And um, we thought, well, we have all these old songs that we started, like something's going on is one of the first songs we ever wrote. Um, and that's the first song on the album. Okay. And then like Poison Tree is actually a really old song too. Some of the newer ones would actually be Slow Down, uh, Where I Fall is really new, is Mm -hmm. newer. We've already got some new songs that we need to record now too. Yeah, we're just trying to get everything down. (laughs) Yeah, that's really the point is we wanted to record this album to get some of the songs down. And, you know, we took this nice, I think, raw approach with Minnehaha. Like it's very... um, you got the rhythm, you got the lead, you got the two vocals and it's a couple extra harmonies, not, not yeah. a lot of fluff. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. really clean and rep- really, I think, representative of who we are. And we just keep learning with the recording process and, you know, with the performing process, which we can get into that. Cause I know you act about, asked about like best gig and worst gig. Mm-hmm. So we're ready to answer that question. <laughs> uh, it's been a really fun journey just writing music and recording it and then also performing recording is a lot of fun isn't it yeah yeah you get a chance a to really echo. hear what you're doing in those headphones and and putting things together and how is it going to be mixed because just because you lay down tracks for something and you have your guitar parts and you have your vocal parts the the song is so far from done right mm-hmm. when you're doing the recording then engineering is just as important than all the other stuff because uh, you can play really well, sing really well. And if it's not engineered well, it's not going to sound great. So there's a lot to it uh, mm. after the recording of the music. So the importance of music, we, I like to talk about this. Just, it's kind of why I'm doing this show, because I think that music is so important. Mm-hmm. But I think it's particularly important in schools, the dedication, the pers- perseverance, the uh, getting along with people, the, the, the vulnerability that you have, all those things inform and educate other areas of your life. Mm-hmm. And so now that's my soapbox, but and I'll step down now and give it to you and ask you, why is music important to you? Why do you get excited about it? Because when I'm doing it, I feel alive. So it's really great to be writing songs and playing music. And I'm so happy that I'm performing too. That is a big part of it. You know, mm-hmm. you can play music all the time at home and create things at home but to have that to work hard and then get the benefit of being able to play in you know wine bars and clubs and festivals it's pretty pretty extraordinary and it's just a part of my being like I love it it's it's awesome and I'm happy to be doing it Mm -hmm. awesome how about you Kelsey yeah um, going back to what you said like the vulnerability piece that's really interesting. It is a very vulnerable experience to share like your own personal things that you've written. So music is very important that way in bringing that out. Um, but yeah, going back to performing is super awesome. But music is just, uh, you know, we're all in a big canvas of life and musicians add different frequencies. We had different colors and I couldn't be happy with life if I wasn't playing music. It's mm. always had to be a piece of it. Yeah, I love that idea of the the adding the color to the canvas. Um, that's so true. That's what art does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It adds a yeah. color. Yeah, we Absolutely. all have different talents. So mm-hmm. yeah. Well, let's turn to the second song, which is called "Red Light," and um, 
I want to know a little bit about this one now and where the idea came from for the song. Now, I'll just say before you start that you did when you sent me the song, you said red light equals racing toward a red light, making it all happen before we die. LOL. <laughs> so <laughs> fill that in for me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Taking your opportunities as they come, not putting things off too long, doing what you love. A little bit on the same lines as Wayside. Yeah, I mean, you you kind of got that song going and then I added a lot of verses to it but you had the core you got the chorus going for that and so then I just responded to it with verses and I was just kind of thinking well about the broad experience the broad journey of life and writing the verses if you listen to the song that's what it's about all the magical things that happen in life and then the dark things and or adjectives to describe those moments sure Kelsey you mentioned courage to do the things that you want to do now instead of putting it off because it, it's, it's scary. Mm-hmm. And I think that you face that. Well, maybe not everybody. I certainly have throughout my life. I'm 50 and, um, <laughs> and I'm still facing it. It's a leap of faith so often. And, and that's what you guys did in putting together. Susie plays guitar mm-hmm. uh, that it took some courage to do that. Yeah. It's very easy to be comfortable or stays like, it would have been easy for you to stay in your band because you had a thing going practice every week, you know, each other. And so, yeah, it is to start those new things. Take some courage. Exhilarating. (laughs) And it's exhilarating. Exactly. So with that thought, that's a perfect thought to go into this song called red light.
This is Musician Talk, and I am your host, Pauline Jennings. My guests today are Kelsey Word and Trisha Schweitzer, who make up the duo named Susie Plays Guitar. You just heard their original tune, Red Light. Love the harmonies. Um, and there's some also some echoing in there that I love. Um, the, the, yeah, the, you added some a little bit of echoes, but like you said, it's kind of a stripped down thing. It's it, it's a little bit raw um, and beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Thanks. So thank you, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, I have some questions about we we touched a little bit about um, gigs and how that they kind of came pretty easily right away, which is really awesome. Yeah. Well done. But my goodness, what a terrible time to start a new project. What did you do the last two years? I mean, maybe a little bit more so, particularly maybe in the smaller places, but how did you, how did you get through COVID? Well, you know, I I have to say we were a little lucky because we actually still got gigs, like not a ton of them, but I will say that. So COVID happened right in that spring of 2020. Um, But we still played in the summertime. We played at a cool place in Golden Valley and did an outdoor gig. And we, they think they had us like three Fridays in a row until they were like, oh, maybe we shouldn't do this anymore because um, (laughs) COVID, right? Yeah. Um, And then, you know, we were going to some wine bars in Wisconsin. They were having us play. And so we were doing a little bit of that. And then we ended up, taking a band trip to Savannah, Georgia kind of, and this was in 2020. Yeah, this was 2020, right? Yeah. So we did a band trip and we got a gig at this tapas bar there. They weren't super concerned about it, I guess. Sure. But anyway, we played at this tapas bar and it was amazing. And there was a lot of people there and it was just so cool to get a gig. And that's a tapas bar. Tapa, not a topless. Yes. Tapa. Yeah, I just wanted to yeah. make sure that that was clear. <laughs> so it was, it was a super, super fun band trip. And, oh, you know, we hope to keep doing stuff like that. Like every couple of years, um, just find a spot and then get a gig and go. And we can do it as a duo. That's yeah. A great idea. Speaking of gigs, you have a gig coming up here in town at the Contented Cow on March 11th. What time does that start? Yeah, I think it's eight to 10. Okay. Yeah. Well, awesome. I'm hoping that I can catch that. I encourage everybody out there to, to catch it. And, um, and I don't want to say catch it because it's COVID. I <laughs> encourage everybody to, <laughs> sorry, I encourage everybody to mosey on down to the con- contented cow on March 11th to hear Susie plays guitar. We are up to best gig, worst gig. And I like to go finish with the best gig to end on a high note, but let's do some laughing first with the worst gig. All right. Did you have one or is it all, is it the oh, same? Oh yeah. I mean, Kelsey, <laughs> I was thinking, gosh, every gig is amazing. And Kelsey reminded me of one that was not. So we played at this wine bar and I, no, a winery or a winery, like a yeah, big outdoors, winery. a huge winery. And Hour there was and a, a ton away. of people there too. I plugged my guitar into the amp and my <laughs> guitar wasn't working. And so I was like, Oh my God, it's not picking up. And Then I was like, maybe it's my battery. Oh, it's my battery and my guitar. I'm like, oh no, I don't have one. Oh no. And so I was running up to ask the staff if they had a battery and they didn't. And then we got some feedback from some of the audience that it was okay. Just play your acoustic, turn Kelsey's guitar down. Sent in the troops. Somebody was on their way with a battery. Yeah. Got it. And then of course I was, (laughs) you know, I, I got the look from Kelsey and she was like, no, don't freak out. (laughs) <laughs> play the song. <laughs> well, then it turned out it that was tough. <laughs> when I got the battery, I put it in, I changed it, still wasn't working. Well, guess what happened? It would have something to do with the amp. You weren't plugged in all the way. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's exactly and neither what of it us, was. neither of us was able to troubleshoot <laughs> that. So that's our worst gig. <laughs> I mean, it's- well, it sounds the like fact that we are actually putting this out there and disclosing this, but yeah, it really did happen. <laughs> well, it's not that the gig was so bad because you guys figured out how to play it, but it was just that you didn't think to check the cable. Yeah. So you had all that angst kind of for nothing. There was a lot of it. <laughs> oh, gear, 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 gear. Is, it's, you know, so often that's, that's the uh, beginning of, of a worse gig is gear. Yeah. Ends and begins and ends with gear. 
So how about one of your best gigs? We've had so many. Can we talk about three? Sure. <laughs> Last night at Carboni's Pizza, that was one of our best gigs. Why? I, it, why? Because the sound was good. The energy was good. We had a few people that were there specifically to see us. And so it just brought a lot of really good energy. Mm-hmm. And the sound guy was amazing too. He's very welcoming, great to work with. You know, I think they're an awesome venue. They treat you well. So, um, that is that Carboni's South, okay, which one though? South, South, South Minneapolis, Minneapolis. Peter mm-hmm. Avenue, mm-hmm. you know, with a sound person, it's just, it's kind of the same as the, as the engineer when you're recording is if you have a good one, it means the, uh, it just makes the world a difference to have a good sound person. Definitely and e- getting EQ on your voices and mixing it and blending and all that kind of stuff. It's hugely mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. Do you guys usually bring your own gear or do you play just places that have a system? There it's a good you? combo, I would say, mm-hmm. you know, like um, most of I mean, like the wine bars, the small wine bars, we always bring our own system. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, you know, we played at the uh, Saints game once and they had a sound guy for us. Oh, and awesome. um, this one of the gigs, which was pretty fabulous, was last summer. We played Twin Cities Pride, the main stage for the Loring the Loring stage for the Twin Cities Pride Festival. So that was really cool to be on the big stage. Yeah. There was a lot of people there too. So that was pretty exciting. I think it sounded great. We played well. It's a big stage for two little Susies. It is a big stage for two little (laughs) Susies, but the two little Susies did it. You stepped (laughs) up. (laughs) We've thought about writing children's books too, like making us a whole friend. No, (laughs) it's a franchise. Yes. (laughs) How did you get, get on the main stage at Pride? We applied. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Wow. Well, talents will get you there quite often. Congratulations. Well, we had played a year before or two years before on a smaller stage. Okay. So they were familiar with us. They had, yeah, they had we that played on, they call it the rainbow stage. 2020, it was canceled. And then yeah. 2021, they, you know, we got invited back. So yeah. it was well, pretty cool. Very lucky. <laughs> awesome. So uh, to close, let's talk about your online presence where people can find your music, your new album um, and your schedule. Sure. The main one is Susie plays S U Z Y Susie plays guitar.net. And then of course, facebook.com slash Susie plays guitar. And then we're out on all the platforms, the iTunes, mm-hmm. Apple music, and on your on your website, SusiePlaysGuitar.net, there your album is there. Uh-huh. It's there, and you can download it for free. Yeah, that's really cool. Why did you decide to do that? Because we just want to put the music out there. I think you know the way that musicians these days make money is by playing live. So, yeah. and we love playing live. So let's keep playing live, and let's get our stuff out there. We want people to easily access it. Well, and it's not like having it on Spotify. You make anything right. per song. It's pennies per song. So it's it's might as well be free for as much as you make on those, unless you hit it really big, but even the really big people don't want to be on there because you don't make enough money. So we'll close by just reminding people that um, Susie plays guitar with Trisha Schweitzer and Kelsey Ward are playing at the contented cow on March 11th at 8 PM. And so I hope to see all y'all down there because I'm going to go to the gig And I want to thank you guys so much for coming on and being on the show so that people who are going to the show have a chance to get to know you a little bit before they go. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is awesome. We can't wait to meet you in person. Oh, I can't wait to meet you in person as well. And I'll look forward to that. So take care. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Yeah, Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Many thanks to Kelsey and Trisha for talking and laughing with me today. What a joy. And so many thanks to you for listening to Musician Talk on The One, KYMN.